Hi there, my friend. Welcome to the channel, a channel about all things agile. Not only agile problem solving and maybe some tools and techniques, but also and most importantly, what goes inside the profession and the stances of being an agile coach. So whether you are an experienced agile coach or one in the making, I hope that you can find something here that will make your day more insightful. So the topic for today's video is very dear to my heart and it's about agile coaching and teams. If you hang out in social media a little bit too much, you sometimes start having a lot of conflicting, plain wrong information. And this video, I hope will help you set the record straight. If you're thinking about what is it that an agile coach does um, or doesn't do at all as far as teams. So the video is gonna be shorter and very focused, agile coaching, teams, how do they interact? Let's talk about three misconceptions between the topic of agile coaches and teams. The first one that I see is that many people will say, well, why do you need to work with the teams? And well, I hate to break it to you, but agile is a lot about collaboration. And the uh, biggest expression of collaboration, I think, is when people organize themselves in teams with a mission, and then, you know, you want to help them achieve performance in that scenario. So some people tend to think this is playing small when you're supporting a team. And that is really a hard misconception because the reality is that a lot of what drives results in an organization is in the day-to-day -day of the people that we perceive or that are in reality in lower levels in the hierarchy, if you will. Now, what is it that you do with teams? You go there and you point your fingers and you inflict help on them. No, of course not. What you do is that you grow teams to a place where their expression of performance matches their own dreams and wishes and the expectations of the organization. So it's not separated. Teams do not operate in a vacuum. So that's usually what you do there. You actually grow people to be at their best potential ever in reality. So you leave the realm of potential and you become all that good stuff in reality in a collective setting. The second misconception is then that, well, you actually don't only work with teams you operate on an individual level. So you're gonna coach maybe a, a product owner, maybe a manager, a VP, um, a, a developer, I don't know, any person at any level in the hierarchy on an individual level. But when you work with groups of people, they might also not be a team. Not everybody working together in a collective setting really constitutes a team. I do have another video where we talk about teams and trust and all that good stuff. So go there, check this um, video out. But another thing as well that has to do with what the Agile coach does that has nothing to do with teams is spending a lot of time assessing and experimenting with the org designs and the systems around the people and, you know, even uh, ideating and considering possibilities for whatever is the mission that you received and agreed on as an Agile coach. So so there is loan time, thinking time, uh, time with individuals, time with people, and time with teams. So the final misconception, number three, is leadership also work in teams. And a lot of people tend to think that when you talk about teams, you're playing small. And they consider playing small because you're working with the developers. And like I said, well, I don't see how the people responsible for creating those awesome products, how can work with them be considered playing small? But you get the point. The fact, though, is that leadership is collectively accountable for several things in the organization. And that's true that in some places more than others, you have bigger or smaller teams of leadership. But that is a great example of you working with a team that also needs to, they have a common goal and they need to achieve certain outcomes and they're actually responsible for driving those outcomes. So that's a very peculiar type of teams and they have their own needs. But as far as uh, becoming a team, they go through similar challenges of team formation and performance, just like any other team. So there you have it, the three most common misconceptions I usually see when people think about agile coaches and teams. And I'm curious, were those the misconceptions that you see the most? Was one of them surprising to you? Let me know in the comments. And also let me know in the comments if there is one that you see a lot that I might have not have considered here and you think, no, that is really important. Please, please mention that one. I'd love to hear. So if you like this video, 
you know what to do. And if you just like it, you know what to do as well. Your opinion is really, really important. So go ahead and give that to me. And if you like this video, consider subscribing so that I know what kind of stuff that I could be creating for you in the future. As far as this video, we are stopping here and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.